We are in a lovely garden devoted to butterflies in rural Spring Green. This is Blooming Valley Nursery, and I'm with one of the owners, Ina Lucas. Uh, Ina, this is just a peaceful, peaceful spot, and this whole bed is kind of devoted to butterflies. Yes, this is what I call the nectar bed, and it is all about creating habitat for butterflies and hummingbirds. Well, uh, it also works to attract me, too, so I'm happy. <laughs> but uh, what do we need? I mean, what, are there special things that will bring the butterflies here? Absolutely. When you're creating a butterfly garden, you have to think about create, you're mimicking nature and creating a condensed habitat for them. Okay, so basics like food, water, shelter. Okay, well then let's start with the basics. Um, food, plants. Yes, <laughs> and specific ones. Okay. So you have to remember that butterflies come from caterpillars. Well, and w there's so many butterflies and so many food sources. Let's focus on monarchs today. That's what we have right here. Perfect. Okay. So this is a monarch caterpillar. Okay. Right here. As beautiful as they are, they need very specific plants. They need plants in the milkweed genus, the, the Asclepius genus. Okay. So swamp milkweed, butterfly weed, um, the common milkweed with the big with the big flower, big leaves on it. So that's about it for them. I mean, that's all they'll eat. That's all they'll eat is that genus. So that's what you need if you want monarch caterpillars. Okay. So we make sure a couple of those are in our bed. Yep. And then they grow up and become beautiful monarch butterflies. Right. Then what do they need? They need adult nectar plants. Okay. So one of the most common ones that butterflies love is this one right here, which is a uh, butterfly bush. Which is beautiful in any garden. A wonderful garden plant. Smells amazing and butterflies love it. And now, I love it when it's healthy. It is not completely hardy in Wisconsin. It is very borderline hardy here. Well-drained soil is a key factor. You sort of treat it as an annual, and if it comes back, you jump for joy. Okay. Uh, any other plant you'd put at the top of your list for monarchs? Uh, verbena bonariensis. Okay. That's the annual verbena that reseeds itself, so you plant it once, and then usually it just keeps coming back every year from seed. Butterflies love it. And again, easy to care for, beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, that takes care of food, mm -hmm. for monarchs at least. Um, shelter. What do butterflies need? Butterflies need to sleep. They have a habit called yep. um, roosting. Okay. So they need to be able to roost at night. They actually start roosting from, um, from when the sun goes down till midday the next morning. About 14 hours of every day, they're roosting. So plants, like for example, this linden tree here, it's a small one, but it has big round leaves on it. Sure. And butterflies will actually roost underneath the leaves. So it'll protect them from rain. It'll extract, it protect them from extreme heat and sun. Um, are they like roosting? Are they like hanging upside down? You mean like yes. a bat? Yes, exactly. Oh, so they're roost. Okay. Okay. So shelter from rain protection. Yep. Okay. And then also um, plants like grasses, um, plants that have structure to them. Butterflies need a place to attach their chrysalis to. Okay. So they will often attach their chrysalis to grasses or to tree branches. Something So they high. need some kind of support or structure. Okay. So grasses in the back and again that gives us a beautiful backdrop for the garden too. Right. right. Okay. Water should be simple. Yes, butterflies need water. They don't need a lot of it. Um, oh. But what they do need is shallow pools of water. So not so. a big bird bath. Right, okay. right. Something that's shallow that has rocks in it or sand in it. Why so rocks? That, uh, because butterf butterflies have a habit um, uh, called puddling, where they will just sit in an area of very shallow water. Because butterflies, since they're eating all that sweet nectar, mm -hmm. they need the minerals from water. So, um, so the shallow water has that mineralized effect, and so they will sit on the edge and sip the water. Okay. So, if we've done all that, we've 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 done everything they need. Or are there anything else we can make to make our garden oh, extra special for them? There's so much more. Um, uh, <laughs> um, one of the, when, well, another interesting habit of butterflies is the nectaring. So when a butterfly, um, a butterfly actually has its taste receptors on its feet. So what really? they will do is they will land on a flower and their proboscis will unfold mm -hmm. 
and they so they taste they taste it with their feet, which causes their proboscis to unfold. So if it tastes good with their feet, then they may eat it. Right. So that being said, you need a variation of flower types in your garden. Some butterflies have long proboscises, so they need more tubular flowers, whereas some butterflies have short proboscises, so they need um, more daisy type flowers where they sit on the petals and eat out of the center. Okay. You know, sometimes in the morning I'll see butterflies just sitting. Not yes. doing anything. And that, Are they waiting for coffee or I mean what? <laughs> they're basking is what they're doing. Um, they're warming up their body temperature. So butterflies need to raise their body temperature from 85 to 100 degrees before they can fly. Oh really? So another thing oh, okay. that you need to add to the garden is um, large rocks or you know a heat sink basically so that in the morning the butterflies will sit there with their wings out horizontally warming their bodies up. Oh, so a great okay. feature in a butterfly garden is a large rock like a boulder that has indentations where water, you know, shallow water will pool so they can heat themselves while drinking shallow, wa the so shallow then, water. So then it'll be a butterfly hangout right there. Exactly, butterfly party. Okay, what about, and, and we've, I don't think we ever repeat this enough, but what about spraying chemicals or anything like that? Not okay. Right. And even if you're using organic chemicals, what we learned, we have an organic, we, we don't use chemicals, chemical sprays at our nursery. We've used organic sprays. Mm -hmm. And um, a few years ago, we stopped using any sprays whatsoever. Wow. And what we found was that our, our butterfly population just went nuts. Because even if you're spraying for bad caterpillars, even with organic sprays, How you're still killing know? all the caterpillars. Sure. How does the spray good know or bad. the good or the bad caterpillar? Right. Okay. So... Really watch with the spraying, yes. provide food, shelter, water, and maybe a nice big rock and sit back and enjoy the show. And um, large massing of color is very oh. important too. So when okay. you're thinking about mimicking nature, um, creating big swaths of color. So at least three plants of the same types, if not Six even or seven more. Or? Right. <laughs> right. Well, and then you really have a show for us to look at too. That's the point. Great idea. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shelley. <laughs> Thank you.